yes, I am satisfied with the action taken by the Westfield Board of Trustees. I think they're doing their due diligence in a responsible way. I'm happy with where this situation is, and I trust them to make the right decision. What's the status of $2 million plus that was frozen by you that was going for a science center for other academic-related uh, matters at Westfield State, suspended when answers were not forthcoming from President DeBell and his representatives in, in a timely manner? Yes, we chose our words carefully when we said this is a, we're going to place this under review, we're going to suspend this funding. We never said cancel. We've had no intention of canceling. We have no intention of punishing students or the institution. On the contrary, we want to invest in both the students and the institution. So we're looking forward to a time when that suspension can be reversed. I think we're moving in that direction, uh, and uh, we want to get back to the business of supporting Westfield. And to take that freeze off of that money, what, what's going to be required? The uh, end of the investigations? I, th I think we need a resolution on this matter, uh, at least with respect to uh, some of the funding. Uh, I think a resolution with respect to other piece of the funding uh, can come sooner, perhaps uh, uh, as a show of confidence uh, in what Westfield has done so far. The letter that's gotten so much attention, the three-page letter that you sent to uh, President Dobell and his representatives, fascinating language, uh, talking about highly questionable practices in the finances at the school, uh, inappropriate behavior, words like that, strong language. And as Commissioner of Higher Education, you answer to the Secretary of Education, Secretary Miller, and ultimately to the governor. That kind of strong language certainly had to be at least in some way cleared or broached with those above you before it went out. Would that be fair to say? Uh, the words on the page were my words. I wrote that letter, uh, working closely with, with my staff. Uh, of course, I consult widely uh, uh, within the administration on how I'm handling this because this is an issue for the whole state. Uh, but those are my words, and I stand by them. You feel you are strongly supported by those above in the administration, though, in this action with Westfield State? Uh, yes, I believe we're all on the same page. The governor, I think, uh, said yesterday on a, on a radio interview that I, that I heard that, uh, that he was strongly supportive of the course that we were following. One of the defenses, if that's the right word, that President Dobell and his representatives are using, they're saying, this is all happening because the Commissioner of Higher Education, you want the job at Westfield State that he has, President of the University, to remain in the state pension system after uh, Governor Patrick leaves office in a year or so. What, what's your response to that? Well, my response is that it's, it's a wild accusation with no basis whatever in fact, and it raises questions in my mind about uh, both the public relations firm and the attorney and, and the president himself in terms of why they would say for one thing, I already am in the pension system. I was a retired state employee when I was president of Northeastern and had to drop drop out when I came back uh, to, to work for the state. I've been a college president for 10 years. I had a great experience. I'm a great admirer of Westfield State University, but I love being commissioner of higher education, and it's not a thought that I've ever had. So I don't know where it came from. I don't know what it's founded on. It struck me as wild and, and uh, strange. We saw action at the state level a couple of years back regarding community colleges and, and a little more centralization of um, control perhaps isn't the right word, a little too strong, a little more centralization of, of their operation. Does what's happened at Westfield State, is it just an aberration or does this perhaps point to maybe a need for some more centralized uh, oversight? This is an important question. Uh, we do have a highly decentralized system uh, and the community college changes that you refer to in the fiscal 13 budget did move in the direction of a somewhat more integrated system so that we could relate the work of the community colleges more clearly to a statewide agenda, for example, in the areas of workforce. And I think a, a similar kind of uh, integration, not centralization, but integration of the state universities uh, would be a useful thing, and we're working with the presidents collaboratively uh, in that direction. So all of that is true, but the Westfield thing, I think is separate from that. I do think this is an isolated circumstance. I don't know of any other uh, comparable uh, circumstance uh, among the state universities or anywhere in public higher education quite like this. So I know it's raising that kind of question, um, uh, but, I, but I think it's a different kettle of fish. Uh, I still want to move toward a greater system integration, uh, but I don't want to take over the state universities. You really came here today to talk with business leaders from around the Springfield area, Western Massachusetts, about the need for the kind of education for our young people to prepare them for the world they're going into, science, technology, math, engineering. 
that's that's a big concern for you. It's a it's a huge concern. It's a huge concern for two reasons. Number one, the state needs more graduates in these fields. Uh, the report that we just issued today on the state of public higher education is clear that we believe we're underproducing in the fields where the economy is growing most rapidly, and that's going to be a challenge for the economy, and it's going to be a challenge for the state. But it's also going to be an issue for our young people. Uh, we need to prepare them in fields where there are jobs, where they can make a good income, where they can support their families. And if we don't do a better job graduating the students, re-enroll, and giving them the skills they need and closing achievement gaps, too many of our students are going to have blighted lives. So I'm here to uh, solicit the support of the business community, and uh, that support is readily forthcoming, I believe, from what I heard today, to invest in public higher education, both for the needs of the state and to help these young people. Thank you.